If you want to learn how to make Ghibli style textures in Substance Painter, the latest course from the 3D coloring book was made for you. This beginner friendly course will show you just how easy it is to make drag and drop anime style smart materials that you can use in any project. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into this week's video. Right, hello everyone. In this video, I will go through a breakdown of my meat hall scene in Unreal Engine 4. I will also briefly go through some material creation and texturing process in Substance. This scene was made for a school project and I wanted to familiarize myself with the workflow using Substance and UE4 for environment art. I need to thank my lecturer Lawrence for the guidance and feedback. So the software used are 3ds Max for modeling, Substance Painter and Substance Designer, some Photoshop and of course Unreal Engine 4. So now let's begin. Okay, first thing to do is research. Here I use Pure Ref to consolidate my research images. I highly recommend it because we can freely organize our images in a canvas as big as we want. Very lightweight too. So check it out. So the kind of research I will look for in an environment are things like architectural style, design and cultural motifs, furniture design and material inspiration. I have also got inspiration from games like Monster Hunter World and Skyrim, as well as TV series or documentaries. Now in Unreal Engine 4, I started with BSP brushes to block out my environment. You can get them from the geometry tab here. So just drag and drop them into your scene to create quick blockouts of your walls and objects and props. So starting straight in UE4 is good because you can walk around your level and really feel the scale of it, uh, whether if it's too big or too small. And at this stage, you can even do some simple lighting for mood. Uh, remember to put a scale model of a human as reference to make sure everything is in a nice scale. You can compare your props to this human size to check. Once I am happy with the block out, I will start modeling out every object in 3ds Max and replace the blockouts with the models once I am done. This way I can continuously check if the props fit the scene in UE4 and I can adjust their positioning anytime I like. Now once all the modeling is complete, we can lighten the scene. I would light the scene before putting textures so that I don't get distracted by the textures. I purely want the lights to come from light sources which are flames and candles in this scene. So I put lights into the mesh actors. This way whenever I put the actor in the scene, it will come with a light as well. Which is uh, very convenient and I find it more consistent. Because I can make changes to the strength of the light and it will update all the instances of the mesh actors. Now we will move on to how I create stylized materials and texturing. I create my materials in Substance Designer. One material I use very frequently in my scene is this stylized wood planks material. I have exposed parameters to control the number of planks all the way to zero. Zero planks is basically my base wood material for most of my props in this scene. This way I keep the style of wood consistent throughout my props. Of course when texturing my props I give all of them this wood texture but I will vary the colors in Substance Painter with an HSL adjustment. I will go through quickly the stylized wood material first. So here is my stylized wood planks material. We start from big to small. So planks, edge chipping, and then wood grain. For planks, it's quite simple. We create the vertical planks with tile generator. And then 
apply a flood fill where we can get various maps generated from it. Flood fill is very useful when you have clean and closed sections in your material. I generated random grayscale for height variation and two gradients with slight angle variation in between them. I blend them together and apply histogram scan. This will create the stylized gaps between the planks due to the angle variations I set earlier. Now we blend it with the random grayscale for height and I applied a make it tile patch because I feel the random extra vertical lines look nice for my stylized wood. It also removes the horizontal line on the edges from the tile generator. For the edge chippings, I use tile sampler to generate square shapes according to a mask map from my planks. I distort the squares with slope blur using crystal 1. Then finally I offset the chippings with a directional warp, making use of the planks map. So we have this result, where the chipping looks like they are on individual planks. Finally, we go to wood green. I merge multiple maps and use directional warp to let the textures flow with the base green direction. Lastly, I add swirl grayscale to make big swirls in the green so it is not so straight all the time. I merge the green with these cracks, which you can easily isolate from Crunch Map 1. It is good to apply directional warp on it too, so it follows your green. Merge with the green, then apply directional warp one more time using the planks. Now I blend the green with my planks and I have my height map. Next, we move on to the other maps that we need. Normal and AO can be generated easily from the height map. I invert my height to get my roughness map because I want the gaps to be roughest. And we don't need metallic because this is just wood. Moving on to color, color is quite simple here. Ben Wilson has created a really useful node to create color variation, so I lazily used it together with a grunge map for all the color variation that I needed. I used it three times here, once for my base plank, once for a green, and once for a dirty pass. Finally, I used a dirt node to put some dirt and dust into the gaps, and that's my multi-purpose stylized wood material. So let's move on to texturing in the Substance Painter. So many of my props have carvings on them and this can be easily done with Substance Painter. Let's look at the tables. Here you may find the wood texture familiar. That's because I used my wood plank material which I went through earlier. I will show you how to make the carvings on the legs. I went to textures.com and found these Viking inspired motifs which I can download in grayscale. Of course I helped myself to them and import them into Substance Painter. With this, you can stamp them onto your models with a paint layer. Remember to set a negative height value because it will really bring out the carved look. These shapes can be made using a mask outline filter. So first you select the polygons in your mask, then Use the filter to generate an outline of the polygon as your mask. Set a negative height in your fill layer and there you go. Easy carved frames. Finally, you can create edgeware using the metal edgeware generator in your mask. So that's basically how I would texture my props in this scene. Now moving on. Once your props are textured, it is important to make sure that they look good together in the scene. After texturing, you should import the textures into Unreal and apply them to your models to check. I have created a master material in my project and applied it to all my materials in the scene. 
This way I can easily apply textures to the props and also adjust their colors. I can also easily create color variations of the same textures by creating a child material. Finally, I add VFX like fire, snow, candle flames and small dust particles in the air. Further adjustments to the lighting and post-processing volume for mood and I am ready to render. That is all for my breakdown. I hope you have learned something useful and enjoyed my walkthrough of the scene. Thank you and take care.